Chapter 31 Psionic Staff You are listening at NovelFull.audio Corpse Explosion Necromancer's signature spell, one could learn it as long as one reached level 4. The principle was to use mental strength and mana to pry the negative energy from the newly dead body, causing it to explode due to energy imbalance. Therefore, the first requirement for corpse explosion was a corpse that had been dead for no more than five minutes. Fresh bodies teetered on the balance of life and death. That was why a small imbalance in the energy could release such a shocking explosive force. When a necromancer who was proficient in corpse explosion reached the second rank, he had the opportunity to learn an advanced spell called Corpse Explosion Chain. This skill could give Corpse Explosion a powerful buff. The corpse of a creature killed by Corpse Explosion would have a 50% chance of automatically creating another Corpse Explosion. Coincidentally, Matthew had mastered this technique a year ago. Coincidentally, each of the violent Zerg infected ones and violent Zerg guards was infested with countless violent Zerg larvae. In terms of chaining corpse explosion, these larvae perfectly played the role of connectors. The damage of a single corpse explosion wasn't great, but the health points of the Zerg larvae were even lower. They were almost instantly killed. And each larva would be treated as a single unit to increase the probability of a chain corpse explosion greatly. That's why. Bang. 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 After the first explosion sounded from the damp and dark cave, the continuous explosion sounded like firecrackers during the spring festival in Matthew's previous life. The haze of negative energy continued to rise from the cave. They looked like little mushroom clouds. The high dot intensity chain explosions also inevitably caused abnormal airflow in the cave. Even though the three of them were within the protective spell, they could feel the wind whistling past them. Ella staggered. If Matthew hadn't reacted quickly and grabbed her, she was almost swept away. Rumble. The serial corpse explosions caused the stone wall to collapse. For a moment, a strong wind blew, and white smoke billowed. A large number of Zergs died in the explosion. In the midst of the chaos, Samantha saw the arrogant guard who had ambushed and chased her. It originally wanted to rely on its thick skin to pass through the area with the most intense explosion. However, a series of mournful wails followed. Its bloated and huge body fell down uncontrollably. In the end, in the purgatory of negative energy woven by white bones and gray fog, the Zerg guard had also contributed its body to the corpse explosion feast. Boom! The huge body exploded. All the creatures within 20 meters of it were blasted into pieces. Matthew estimated that after the big guy exploded, the number of Zergs present had already decreased by more than half. However, the corpse explosion continued. Slowly, the loud explosion chain turned into occasional explosions. Twenty minutes later, Matthew used the arcane missile that came with his charged staff to deal with the stragglers that escaped the explosion. The terrifying corpse explosion finally stopped. The wind slowed down slightly, and the white smoke sank. The three of them walked out of the range of the gradually dimming rune of guard. In front of them was a mess. A large amount of debris was mixed together. Minced meat, broken bones, eyeballs, nails, hair, fascia, internal organs, stones, gold coins, clothes. A large amount of blood and pus sprayed on the stone walls in all directions. The air was filled with a nauseating smell. Even with Matthew's mental fortitude, he almost couldn't resist the urge to retch. Ella flew away without a sound. Samantha, on the other hand. Perhaps it was because she often fought with the Zergs. Her resistance to such bloody scenes was obviously stronger. She walked around the scene of the corpse explosion with a calm expression, checking to see if there were any stragglers left. Only when she saw the parts left behind by the Zerg guards did she slightly frown. On the other side of the battlefield, Matthew met up with soldier and counted the few spoils of war and losses. 
In terms of losses, except for soldier, all eleven skeleton soldiers became triggers for the explosion. This was what Matthew had accumulated in Rolling Stone Town for a long time. It was impossible to say that he did not feel heartache, but skeleton soldiers were essentially cannon fodder. There weren't many spoils of war either. There weren't many good items on the Zerg race, and they were bombarded repeatedly by the corpse explosion spell indiscriminately. The items that survived the explosions were of high quality. Matthew found a sapphire ring, a card that looked like an access card, and a psionic staff the length of an arm. The sapphire ring was not only beautiful but it was also enchanted with a spiderweb spell. Unfortunately, it was not of a high grade and could only be cast once a day. There was no clue as to the origin of the card, but Matthew noticed that the emblem of the Unto Empire was engraved on the lower right corner of one of the cards. This could be a certificate to enter an important laboratory. As for the last psionic staff, because it was in an unappraised state, Matthew habitually activated an identification skill on it after he obtained it. Appraisal failed. You are unable to learn the attributes and usage of the psionic staff. Hint. You need higher knowledge, Sai, I failed. Matthew raised his eyebrows, and then he felt a headache. Most items related to psionic power could only be used after being appraised. In order to appraise such items, the user of the identification skill had to have a high level of psionic knowledge. However, psionic knowledge usually came from items related to psionic power. It could be said to be a perfect closed loop. However, Matthew was not discouraged. He still had an advanced identification scroll gifted by Master Ronan at home, which should be able to identify this staff. The only thing he needed to consider was whether this staff was worthy of the advanced identification scroll. Matthew gently stroked the amber stone embellished with light blue on the psionic staff. For a moment, he could not make up his mind. What an impressive explosion! Your strength has exceeded my expectations. To be honest, you've helped me a lot. Under normal circumstances, it would have taken me a lot of effort to get away. Samantha's voice sounded. Matthew put away his staff and said calmly, This is nothing. They are also my targets. Samantha stared at Matthew with her bright eyes. But I made you lose a team of skeleton soldiers. I owe you this. Matthew waved his hand. It's just a team of skeleton soldiers. Don't worry about it. No, this is very important. I'm thinking of a way to make it up to you. Samantha's eyes were bright. Or you can try to make some requests, but I might not be able to satisfy all of them. Matthew thought about it. Maybe we can work together. This hive is huge, and we haven't even explored a third of its surface. As moonwalkers, we have the same goal. Samantha shook her head without hesitation. No, I won't cooperate with you. Before Matthew could say anything. She spoke first, how about this? I might not be able to accept your request, so I've decided to return a team of skeleton soldiers to you. Eli and I killed a lot of infected people, and their bodies were buried in specific locations on each floor after being processed. I think those materials should be enough for you. That was fine too. Matthew was not unhappy about being rejected. He looked at Samantha curiously and asked, Why did you reject me? Just because I'm a necromancer. Samantha said honestly, I'm sorry, but I really don't want to work with a necromancer. It goes against my nature. Matthew couldn't help but laugh. Our nature souls all so narrow minded. Samantha was stunned. What right do you have to expel the undead from nature? Matthew asked righteously. Can't undead creatures be a part of nature? Is your understanding of nature a concept instilled into you by those conservative and backward existences who hold power? If that's the case, then I really don't want to cooperate with you. Your understanding of nature is too shallow. What? What are you talking about? Samantha asked in shock. How could Her Highness the Goddess allow you to say such blasphemous words? 
Blasphemy. Was this level of challenge considered blasphemy? Matthew now had a new understanding of the moonwalker's mind. In fact, Matthew didn't care if the goddess of the moonlight would punish him or not. Not to mention that she had a favor to ask of him, even without the pressure of the violent zerg, it was uncertain whether she had the ability to punish him or not. After all, according to the information he had learned from Master Ronan, it had been hundreds of years since the famous event, the ascension of the Heavenly Family Palace. The influence of the gods on the material plane could be said to be negligible. Not to mention the human countries, even the elves who were relatively devout in their beliefs, had already gone against the will of the gods. Only conservative and backward groups like the Druids still maintained a relatively fixed belief. Since there's no room for cooperation, I'll leave first. Matthew yawned and prepared to go home. Remember to bring me to the skeleton material the next time we meet. Finally, let me share my own understanding. For me, nature is all dot inclusive. It doesn't only include the narrow embodiment that humans can see but also the truth of the universe. Samantha stared at Matthew, her expression changing. Matthew didn't say anything else and disappeared. Samantha did not leave. She paced back and forth. Her gaze was erratic. Not long after. Footsteps came from the cave behind her. Sorry, I'm late. Did something happen here? Eli asked apologetically. Samantha hesitated for a moment and repeated Matthew's words. After hearing this, Eli was furious. Not only is he blaspheming God, but he is also blaspheming nature. How could dirty undead creatures be considered a part of nature? He's just waxing tails. And he's just a mere two ended out rank necromancer. How can he have the cheek to talk about the universe? If he were in our earth society, a person like him would have been robbed of everything and exiled to the underground of the Far East. Eli cursed at him fiercely. Samantha was surprisingly silent. Time passed. Eli's heart skipped a beat. Samantha, don't tell me you believe his nonsense. Samantha hurriedly shook her head. How is that possible? I'm just thinking about how to repay him. After all, he saved my life just now. Eli heaved a sigh of relief and nodded. If he really saved your life, then we should have done something to repay him. I have some leftovers. You can give them to him as compensation. Then, he said in a reproachful tone, next time when I'm not around, don't take risks alone. Samantha replied casually, got it. Eli asked excitedly, then let's continue. Samantha hesitated for a moment, then bit her lip and said, no, I'm injured and a little tired. I'll call it a night. See you next time, Eli. With that, she disappeared. Only Eli was left standing there, confused. At home in Rolling Stone Town. Hint. You have consumed an advanced identification scroll. Appraisal was successful. You have obtained cough staff, psionic item, dot. Chapter 32. Domain. Temperance you are listening at novel full dot audio. Description. When the wand is fully charged, it can instantly cause up to three targets to fall into a violent coughing state. Note. When coughing, the target's focus will be reduced by at least 10 points. If the coughing target was located in a crowd, it could quickly cause a small dot scale infection. The duration of coughing depended on the target's level and immunity. You cannot make legendary, undead, and mechanical units cough. This staff can ignore all defensive spells below legendary there is a certain chance that the coughing state will be dispelled by a high dot level priest. A small divine artifact. When he saw the explanation, he was stunned. Matthew knew that his usage of the advanced identification scroll was worth it. This thing is simply the bane of spellcasters. He fondly caressed the smooth side of the staff. Focus was the most important attribute of spellcasting. If one did not focus enough, it was very likely that the spellcasting would fail, and the consequences of the failure were often extremely tragic. 
Imagine this. A high dot level mage who had carefully set up a defense was passionately chanting a high dot level spell that could turn the tide of the battle. Suddenly, his throat felt itchy, and his eyes rolled back. The spell stuck and turned into a cough. Then, what happened next? While his focus was being cut off, he still had to endure the terrifying spell backlash. Mages and warlocks were not the only ones who could be affected by this wand. It could also interrupt druids, shamans, and bard spellcasting. One step further. Rogues, who needed high dot precision movements to maintain their threat in battle, would also suffer setbacks. High dot level warriors, monks, sword saints, and other resistant monsters could probably cough while hacking at people. The others would be affected to varying degrees. As for the priest. In this era where the gods are far away, it's not that easy to meet a priest. No wonder the Unto Empire is so crazy. Psionic energy does have its merits. Matthew held the psionic staff tightly in his hand. After a moment of excitement, he frowned slightly. Because in the next line of the description, there was another sentence. Staff charging method unknown, insufficient psionic knowledge, even an advanced identification scroll could not figure out its full appearance, which showed how rare psionic knowledge was. However, Matthew was not in a hurry. This scroll had already helped him determine the direction of the information search. Next, he just needed to find a way to collect knowledge, such as the charging method of psionic items. It seems that I have to find time to visit the Crucible House and find the Tower Spirit, who is extremely lacking in love to inquire about Master Ronan's recent situation. He thought about it. Matthew put away the psionic staff properly. Then, according to the usual practice, he began to review tonight's encounter. In a situation where I suddenly encounter a large number of enemies, it's not a problem to abandon the ordinary skeleton soldiers. However, I could still do better in terms of distance control. My clothes were already stained with blood. If I asked Peggy to wash my clothes later, she would nag at me again. This was very embarrassing. The defensive spell in the defensive psalm is indeed impressive. The second dot tier infected body can't go through the shield at all, but it can probably take a few hits from the third dot tier violent zerg guard. There were still some blank pages at the back of the spellbook, which seemed to be able to be filled with some other defensive spells. However, such spells were usually for one dot time use only. I wonder how much a mage who specializes in defensive magic will charge to imbue the pages of the spellbook. The existence of the Unto Empire proves that I have indeed come to a world with a game. Like Worldview. Psionic items are very powerful, but I can't have too many greedy thoughts. I should first do my old job well and study other things when I have the strength. Hmm, I'll set a small goal first. I'll expand the oak forest to about 1,800 trees before summer comes, that the tip of the quill dipped in mineral ink flew across the cheap papyrus. Writing manuscripts was a small habit that Matthew had developed since he transmigrated. At first, he only recorded the difficulties of planting trees and some esoteric knowledge. Later, he would also use them to vent his longing for his hometown and record some thoughtful content. Anyway, he used Chinese characters, and his handwriting was so illegible that only he could barely recognize it. He saw this as a unique way to relieve stress. During this period of time, Matthew's brain was often alternating between extreme emptiness and high dot speed operation. Swoosh. 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 The pleasant sound of writing rang out. Matthew quickly wrote the last paragraph. As for what I said before I left, I hope it left an impression on Samantha. Maybe, she will be my first experimental subject to explore my unique path of legend. Perhaps Eli has potential too. However, I still have to be careful not to hurt them. Although these two druids are old dot fashioned, they are very kind and upright. Undying and nature. This was the question that Matthew had been thinking about ever since he transmigrated. He knew very well that these two seemingly different paths would be the source of his future power. 
Based on the world's knowledge, the two paths were almost completely opposite. People did not even want to think about why they were opposite as if it was a natural law. Matthew had once asked Master Ronan this question. The latter pondered for a long time before giving Matthew an answer. Ronan told him that all the concepts that were currently used on the continent could not be separated from the interpretation of the world by the gods of the Age of Enlightenment. Chapter 33 Domain Temperance You are listening at NovelFull.audio In the era when the gods rose up and interfered with the human world with their own power, in order to consolidate their absolute authority in their own domain, they formed a set of explanations for the world and concepts under the tacit understanding and compromise of many parties. This was the worldview inherited by many races on the continent. This concept had lasted for too long. As a result, no one was willing to break it for hundreds of years after the gods left. For mages, spells are low.level tools, domains are middle.level tools, and concepts are high.level tools. But to the gods of the heavenly family palace, the concept was their life. For example, in the Age of Enlightenment, if one day all living beings believed that what rose at night was no longer the moon, then the next day, all the gods related to the moon were at risk of falling. Of course, the situation was very different after the ascension of the heavenly family palace. The gods were powerless to interfere with the present world. Concepts were still a source of power for them, but concepts were no longer fatal. More importantly, they became too weak. This is why we can sit here and discuss concepts without considering the feelings of the gods. In fact, they were a bunch of pitiable worms that had been swept into the trash heap, destined to never shine again in this world. After their ascension, it was the era of spellcasters. I admire your views on nature and immortality. If you embark on the path of legend one day, you might really have a chance to walk on a supreme path that no one has ever walked before. These were Ronan's original words. Matthew was deeply moved after hearing it. He was excited that the light shone on his previously lost path, but he was also glad that he met a good teacher like Ronan when he had just started. In Matthew's opinion, it was inevitable that the concept of undying and nature went hand in hand on his body. If he continued to use the existing concepts and worldview, then the two would inevitably conflict with each other. He even suspected that the chaotic characteristics of the system were a manifestation of conflict. To solve this problem, he had to come up with a new concept. And in this new concept system, he had to make the undying and nature mutually inclusive. This was theoretically possible. After all, that negative energy plane that symbolized the origin of the undead was naturally formed. It should belong to the broad sense of nature. As time passed, there would be a day when the world would be destroyed. When the universe was destroyed, it would return to death, and death was a sub-domain of undying. The two could be mutually inclusive. Of course. With Matthew's current strength, it was still too early to talk about the concept. He had to grasp the power of undying and nature at least before he could announce the new concept to the world. But a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Persuading the most conservative druid to accept the possibility of the overlapping of undying and nature was Matthew's test after planting the tree. He finished writing. Matthew did not put away the stack of papyrus. He was just taking a short rest. Then, he continued to write. Next was the content of his future plan. Matthew liked to make plans regularly and list out the things that needed to be done one by one. The first was planting trees. Before summer arrived, this was Matthew's main business. No project could affect his continued effort in planting trees. For this reason, he decided to reduce the time he spent cleaning the Zerg nest at night. After all, the lower he went, the more dangerous it would be. He had to ensure that there were no stragglers that escaped from the upper levels before he considered going to the next level. He believed that Ella and the goddess would understand. The second was the learning of spells and the advancement of his profession which had been delayed for half a month. 
these two were actually not that urgent, not to mention the spells that could be learned at any time. Matthew's level was now stuck at level 8. If he wanted to continue to improve, he had to complete a ritual called Night of the Undead to obtain the qualification to advance to Advanced Necromancer. He could also go for other powerful or unorthodox advanced professions. The true necromancer, the Lord of Paleness, the Lord of the Dead Souls, the Psy of Ode, the Tomb Guard, there was also Bai Yen City's characteristic advanced necromancer class, the Chained Death. In short, if he did not advance, his level could not continue to increase, and his experience could only be stored temporarily. However, advancement often required a lot of energy and time. After some thought, Matthew decided to plan for the advancement in the first week of summer. This meant that he still had enough time to think about which path to take. Lastly, he needed to add some necessary props and items. He wanted to buy scrolls. The weapon that soldier requested had to be forged by someone else. If he still had money left, Matthew wanted to exchange it for a bigger magical bag. Also, a long time ago, he had taken a fancy to a ring in the crucible house that could increase his energy limit. However, he thought about it. He sighed. In the end, he crossed out the last two items from his to.do list. It was late at night when all the paperwork was completed. Matthew sorted the papyrus paper and pressed it with different weights. He had just stretched when a white light shone. Pa! A coconut fell into Matthew's arms. Wait, where did you get this? Matthew was surprised. Unfortunately, the oak tree fairy came and went quickly. He only saw a flash of white light, and the other party disappeared, leaving Matthew alone to enjoy this gift of nature. Chapter 34 Domain Temperance you are listening at NovelFull.audio. How do I crack open this thing? Matthew touched the thick coconut shell with both hands, not knowing whether to laugh or cry. However, very quickly. His attention shifted from the coconut to the ability, gift of nature. He pondered for a moment. Dot Matthew placed the coconut on his thigh, took out another piece of paper, and wrote, How should I use this miraculous and strange ability? He stopped writing and thought for a moment. If he were a greedy person, he would strive to maximize his benefits. He would collect corpses through all sorts of legal or illegal channels and then bury them in his oak forest. After that, he only needed to sit back and enjoy the fruits of others' labor. But was that really right? Matthew shook his head decisively. Boundless gifts seemed tempting, but if he did that, what difference would it make him from those people who did all kinds of evil for power? Besides, there might be hidden dangers to this ability that he had not discovered. Matthew didn't think that he could always enjoy the gifts without paying any price. His intuition told him that abusing this ability could cause a lot of problems. Therefore, he had to be cautious. Matthew decided to take the initiative to control the number of gifts. He wouldn't refuse a corpse that was delivered to him, but he wouldn't take the initiative to search for a burial object either. In addition, I should also control my thoughts in terms of perception. I can't think of burying someone when I see that they have powerful abilities, this kind of greedy thinking is very dangerous. It might gradually strip away my humanity. Nature's gift is a gift, and I shouldn't take the initiative to demand or expect it. He wrote these. Matthew heaved a sigh of relief. At that moment it was as if something hazy in his heart had been broken. His heart was clear and refreshed. In the next second, he suddenly noticed that everything around him had fallen into a strange distortion. In a trance, Matthew saw countless faces that seemed to be immersed in mercury. Some of them were happy, some were sad, some were greedy, and some were cold. It was as if there were pairs of eyes with different emotions watching him. His skin was itchy from the gazes. Just as Matthew was about to give in, all the images disappeared. Powerful energy was injected into his body. You have firmly rejected an incredible temptation in the depths of your heart. 
you have successfully stepped into the sub-domain of desire, temperance. As a reward for stepping into the field, you can choose one of the following three abilities. 1. Heart of Tranquil Water, your willpower is enough to resist most charms below legendary level. 2. Spare Power, after your mana or stamina is completely exhausted, a small portion of energy will be replenished. Amount of Usage 10 to 3. A heart without regrets, you can choose whether to seal the emotion regret. After sealing it, you will never be disturbed by this emotion, after the unexpected joy. Matthew began to think. These three options actually had their own merits. A heart without regrets, could help a person permanently remove a relatively negative emotion, and it could also be unsealed at any time. It was flexible and easy to use. There was a limit to the number of times he could use spare power, but it could always help him in a desperate situation. However, who could refuse the heart of tranquil water? Out of courtesy, Matthew glanced at the other two options and chose one without hesitation. You have completed the enlightenment of the temperance sub domain. Your current status Initial entry You have received a permanent status of clear mind. Clear mind. Every day, as long as you complete the restraint of a certain desire, you will have a clear mind for at least one hour. In this state, your learning efficiency will be three times that of usual. This is very useful. If we're talking about desire, I am already restraining it every day. Matthew couldn't help but mutter. In the next second, a faint voice came from outside the basement. I knew it. Matthew, I knew that you were actually restraining the urge to violate me every day. You necromancers are all the same, aren't you? Matthew turned around. Peggy was swinging her long legs against the door frame. As she was doing that, she was still winking at Matthew. This scene. Matthew could only say in his heart, what in the? What's the matter, he asked. There are three big things I'm about to tell you. Peggy became serious. Chapter 35 Matthew's Living Room You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 35 Matthew's Living Room First, when I visited our neighbor's house in the middle of the night, I happened to see the Lord's guards leaving through the eastern gate of the Mage District. They were fully armed, and there were about twenty of them. I'm guessing that they weren't there for a walk. Peggy said. Matthew nodded slightly. The Lord's guards were the absolute elites of the Suki family. They were independent of the garrison and only listened to Rieger's orders. Most of the time, they would not leave the camp next to the Legia's residence. Only during wars or rebellions could they be seen in other parts of the town. Rieger has been keeping quiet for half a month. It seems like he's making a big move. Matthew gently kneaded the feathers at the end of the quill, and his eyes gradually became clear. It should be about the traitor. Peggy shrugged. I don't know about that. I'm just sharing interesting or suspicious signs with you, as you asked. Dot, but if your judgment is correct, then the traitor is probably not a small figure. It is very likely that he is a knight with a thief. Otherwise, Rieger would not need so many people. Matthew nodded in agreement. Although this matter is important, it has nothing to do with us. The next item is especially important. Peggy stared at Matthew seriously and said word by word, Matthew, you need to get back to work. Matthew was shocked. We don't have enough money anymore. Peggy threw a stack of bills and an account book on the table. There were all kinds of items and numbers written on them, and Matthew was dazzled. This is the account book for the last quarter and the budget for the next quarter that I just prepared. Let's talk about income first. You went out a few times recently and brought back some one-dot-time income. These gold coins are about 700. And ever since you took a leave of absence from the Cypher Public School, Headmaster Ryan has stopped your double salary. Relying solely on the allowance from the Public Security Bureau, your monthly income is only 50 gold coins. 
Remember these numbers, and let's talk about expenses. In terms of food and accommodation, you have very high requirements for three meals a day. I prepare a variety of food for you every day, but many of the ingredients themselves are very expensive. Fortunately, the fairies would send some fresh vegetables and delicacies over every now and then. But even so, we still have to spend a lot of money in a month. Here, it's very clear. Your food expenditure is about 5 gold coins per month, and I need to buy negative energy stones to maintain my life and physical strength. Recently, I've been deliberately reducing my consumption, but it still costs around 25 gold coins per month. Look, our monthly food expenses actually cost 30 gold coins. Peggy growled and said, this is too extravagant. Matthew pinched the bridge of his nose. It is indeed extravagant. However, the biggest expenditure is still in the greenhouse. In order to ripen a large number of seeds at the same time and cultivate them into saplings, you need to open the growth circle in the greenhouse at all times. This requires a large amount of silver powder and sunstones, and the monthly expenditure is more than 100 gold coins. This did not include the cost of buying seeds. Next, you would buy a full set of attribute enhancement scrolls. Even if that feminine mage in Bai Yen City is willing to give you a discount, a set will cost you 200 gold coins. I also know that you want to buy a new magic book, a new magical bag, and that ring that increases the maximum limit of your energy. However, if this continues, your savings will be exhausted within seven months. We'll go bankrupt then. Matthew. Peggy looked very nervous and didn't feel safe at all. Matthew thought for a moment. I've also calculated the expenditure. There's one thing you might not have noticed. The main factor that caused the expenditure gap is actually the greenhouse. After this spring, I'll greatly reduce the consumption of the greenhouse. But that's still not enough, is it? Peggy stared at him, then covered her jaw with one hand and said rather exaggeratedly, Matthew, why don't you let me go back to the negative energy plane? I don't need extra negative energy stones to survive there. Although I don't like that place, at least it can lighten your burden. Matthew looked at her speechlessly. Or you can go back to class. You are an excellent history teacher. Peggy tried to persuade him with reason and emotion. However, the salary given to me by the public school is only 60 gold coins a month. If we follow your calculation, we will still be unable to make ends meet. Matthew spread out his hands, indicating that he was a lazybones who did not want to go to work. No, as far as I know, as long as you are willing to go back to class, your salary will increase to 100 gold coins a month. Peggy's plan was revealed. So, go back to class, Matthew. This family needs your income. The girls in school are also waiting for you to come back. Did you take Principal Ryan's money? Peggy confessed, actually, this is also the third thing I want to talk about. Miss Sif came by today and said that she had something to talk to you about. I told her that you weren't here, so she planned to wait for you in the living room. I told her that you might not come back tonight. She looked a little disappointed. After sitting in the kitchen for about an hour, she left with some regret. However, she told me that she would visit you again tomorrow at the same time. Matthew rubbed his temples. Did you say no? Peggy glanced at him. I said yes. Chapter 36 Matthew's Living Room You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 36 Matthew's Living Room Why? Matthew asked. Paige crossed her arms. Because that girl was very cute. She chatted with me for more than an hour in the kitchen and even asked me what dishes you liked. She promised me that when she came tomorrow, she would bring me the purgatory recipes hidden in her house. As a skeleton who aspires to become a top chef, of course, I couldn't refuse. Matthew was amused. So that's why you're urging me to go to work. Was it Sif's idea? Also, is this the big thing you mentioned? Peggy said matter. Of factly, going to work on time is a virtue, Matthew. 
Besides, this concerns my dream and your happiness. Why isn't it important? I want to remind you that Sif is different from other girls. Her mind is much more mature than you think of underage girls. I think she suits you very well. Matthew spread his hands and joked, Unfortunately, her father does not suit me. I thought so too, Peggy said seriously. So I gave her a suggestion. I told her to get rid of her father, who likes to follow his daughter when she comes to find you tomorrow. Matthew scratched his head. So Rieger was following Sif again. Didn't he have his own work to do? Who knows? Peggy said. He's a pitiful person, but this kind of oppressive protection may not give Sif happiness. He should learn to let her grow up on her own. You look like you have a lot of experience with children, Matthew teased. Peggy was stunned for a moment. Her soul fire flickered again, and she didn't speak for a long time. Eh, new memories. Matthew lowered his voice. No, Peggy shook her head. But I think I heard this sentence from another person. I don't know if you've had a similar experience. A moment, a sentence, that strong feeling of deja vu, as if you've experienced it before. Matthew nodded. The two of them were silent for a while. So, are you going back to class or not? Peggy asked suddenly. Matthew blinked. The reason why I was willing to go to class was partly because I lacked money. On the other hand, I hoped to use the school library and the students' books at home to catch up on knowledge. Now that I don't need that anymore, I suggest you forget the previous suggestion. He paused for a moment and thought, but I really should find myself a legal, stable, and quick job. What do you think about that, Peggy? Peggy yawned and looked disinterested. How would I know? I'm just a muddled-headed skeleton. Good night, Matthew. The next night. Matthew, who had been busy in the forest for the whole day, returned to his home in town early. After dinner, he took a shower and waited in the living room with a book. Although the content of the book wasn't boring, Matthew was a little distracted. He was mainly thinking about how to tactfully persuade Sif not to come to him every few days. He had a good impression of Sif. Therefore, he did not want to hurt her even more. 7 p.m. It was almost time for Sif's visit. A bell rang outside the house. Matthew put down his book and quickly got up to open the door. However, what he did not expect was. It was another woman standing outside the fence. Samantha. Matthew looked at her in surprise. Please forgive me for coming in uninvited, and please don't blame Ella. I was the one who begged her to tell me your address. Samantha looked a little tired. However, there was a strange look in her eyes. At this moment, she was wearing a dress that was in line with the trend of human towns, but it did not fit her well. Her chest swelled and trembled slightly. Her expression was a little awkward. Uh, I'm not used to places where humans gather. Can you let me in? Samantha asked in a low voice. Of course. However, before Matthew could open the door to welcome her in. Not far away, a mournful roar erupted, no. The man roared as he walked closer, Samantha, what are you doing? Why did you go to this necromancer's house? Matthew silently watched the menacing Eli. Look, this. He looked at Samantha again. In the next second. The uneasiness on the female druid's face instantly disappeared, replaced by anger and fierceness. Eli, I'm warning you. Do not follow me. Samantha's voice was like a beast's roar, making one's heart palpitate. She turned around and stomped towards Eli. Every step she took. Her body expanded. Three steps later. A beautiful and flawless brown fur draped over her body. She had transformed from a 1.7-meter tall human woman into a brown bear that was more than three meters tall. Please wait a moment, Mr. Matthew. Samantha turned around and said in a gentle and apologetic tone. You've never used that tone with me. Eli was still angrily accusing her. 
the giant bear pounced forward and grabbed Eli's body. It was as if she was dragging a log as she rushed out of the town. In the blink of an eye, the two figures disappeared one after another. Only a shallow mark was left on the cobblestone floor. Ten minutes later. A black shadow appeared at the end of the mark. It was a leopard. She lightly jumped in front of Matthew. I'm sorry, but Eli won't bother us anymore. Chapter 37 Matthew's Living Room You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 37 Matthew's Living Room Matthew thought for a moment and didn't say anything in the end. He politely led Samantha into the living room. Peggy, we have guests. Matthew shouted. Peggy reluctantly came out of the kitchen. She glanced at Samantha and snorted again. Then, she turned around and brought a cup of cold coffee from the kitchen. At this moment, the bell rang again. Sorry, excuse me. Matthew had to open the door first. This time, it was indeed Sif standing outside the fence. She was no longer wearing the dark red cloak but a white dress. She was tall and had long legs. Her legs were close together, and her hands were behind her back. Her smile was sweet and gave people a feeling of healing. Good evening, Matthew. Sif smiled and greeted him. Matthew smiled back. Good evening. Well, please come in first. As he spoke, he moved to the side. Sif took half a step forward. During this process, she suddenly turned around and looked at the alley opposite her with a helpless expression. Wait for me, Matthew. She jogged over. In the shadows of the alley, Sif poked a section of the wall, and a red blanket appeared on the wall. The blanket fell, and an embarrassed middle-aged man appeared in front of her. Father, you promised not to interfere with my freedom, said Sif angrily. Rieger's face turned red, and he quickly retorted, but you also promised me that you would pay attention to your own safety. Sif's eyes widened. But I'm going to Matthew's house. It's not a dangerous place. Rieger's face was bitter. To him, that was probably the most dangerous place in Rolling Stone Town. But he didn't dare to say this to Sif. In the many arguments and conversations with his daughter, they did have an agreement. He was the first to violate the agreement. Therefore, he tried to coax Sif out of her unhappiness. I promise you, I will leave now. Finally. Rieger patted Sif's head reluctantly. Under the latter's gaze, he turned around and left the street. However, less than five minutes later, he turned around and sneaked into the shadows again. Detestable necromancer. Rieger gritted his teeth in hatred, but it was really inconvenient for him to do anything to Matthew. He watched Sif's back and Matthew's smiling face disappear behind the door, and the uneasiness in his heart grew stronger. No. I can't just wait outside like this. I have to see what they are doing. The living room. They're in the living room. I have to find a place where I can look into the living room. Rieger's gaze frantically searched the surroundings. Very quickly. He found a red roof with a tall chimney. Rieger was agile and jumped up. He took two steps forward and revealed a happy expression. As expected, I can see Matthew's living room from here. However, the roof was tilted upward on both sides. If he wanted to see into Matthew's living room more clearly, he still had to go up. So he grabbed hold of the bricks and stepped forward. All the way to the roof. Suddenly. He bumped into a similarly sneaky and wild figure. That person's face was filled with unwillingness, and his eyes were fierce. When Rieger bumped into him, he was also staring at Matthew's living room. Rieger was stunned for a moment. Then, as if he had thought of something, he instantly became furious. He grabbed the wild man's shoulder and asked, Did the despicable necromancer get your daughter too? Chapter 38 Matthew's Living Room You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio Chapter 38 Matthew's Living Room 
Dot grabbed by Rieger, Eli instinctively wanted to counterattack, but he restrained himself at the critical moment. His intuition told him that the man in front of him did not seem to have any malicious intentions. He frowned and pondered the meaning of Rieger's question. Then, he shook his head and said, no. Rieger was a little surprised. Matthew was well dot known for being liked by girls. He thought that, just like him, Eli was a family member of the victim girls. I'm sorry. Realizing that he had lost his composure, Rieger let go of his hand and sighed. I really envy you. You don't know how popular that necromancer is among the underage girls. If you have a daughter, please keep an eye on her, or you'll regret it. Eli's lips quivered slightly. In the end, he said truthfully, the one who just went in was my girlfriend. Rieger widened his eyes. The two men on the roof fell into a dead silence. In Matthew's living room. The atmosphere was also a little strange at first. When two young women with different figures and looks appeared in a sealed space, a few meaningful eye exchanges were inevitable. Very quickly. Sif smiled sweetly. Matthew, do you have guests? You guys go ahead. I'll go to the kitchen with Peggy. As she spoke, she actually hooked her arm around Peggy's arm with incomparable ease. The two of them went to the kitchen affectionately. Not long after, laughter came from the kitchen. Samantha looked away and asked curiously, are all human girls so bold now? Matthew shook his head and smiled. Sif is an exception. He poured Samantha another glass of milk. I came to look for you today because of what you said the other day. Samantha went straight to the point. At first, I didn't think that what you said was right, but your words reminded me of the past. A friend. She took a sip of milk and pressed her lips together to wipe away the white foam. Her beautiful face revealed a deep reminiscence. In fact, it has been a long time. There was someone who said something similar to me, but at that time, I was too young, and I lacked knowledge of this world. I thought about it carefully. Although you are a necromancer, you don't look like a bad person. That day in the hive, I saw you transform into a raven. That wasn't a mage's ability. That is the shape-shifting form that only druids have. No matter how bad the situation was, the goddess of moonlight would never give the title of moonwalker to someone who had nothing to do with druids. It was these thoughts that prompted me to look for you. I want to know if you can really master the abilities of both nature and immortality at the same time. Matthew smiled. Sorry, this is my secret. Samantha blushed. She seemed a little uneasy. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to pry into your secrets. I just. I just want to confirm one thing. Matthew crossed his hands and rested his chin on them. Why don't we talk about your friend first? He's the biggest reason why you came to find me, isn't he? He thought Samantha came to him because she was convinced by his wonderful debate. He did not expect that there was another reason. This made Matthew feel a little frustrated and curious. What kind of friend would make Samantha, an old dot fashioned druid, dare to break through her shackles and come to him? Samantha was silent for a while. After a long time. She then slowly said, All right, about my friend, I have to start from my hometown. My hometown is a village by the sea. My parents and the other adults in the village make a living by fishing. I don't have many memories of that village. I don't know why, but I was nine or ten years old at that time, but my memories of my hometown are so vague. I only remember that one day, all the people in the village ran out to watch some festivities. My mother pulled me along. It was on a shoal with jagged reefs. We saw a huge, magnificent, majestic, and exquisite tower ship on the shore. No matter what words I used, I couldn't express the shock I felt when I saw that ship for the first time. It was like the armor of a god, making people feel awe when they saw it. On the ship, there was a flag with golden lines on it, and the patterns on it were also very beautiful. 
the villagers had never seen such a flag before. Many years later. I found it in Jade Court's library. That was the flag of the Sioux country. Dot. At this point, Samantha paused and stared at Matthew with a strange look. Do you know about the Sioux country? Matthew quickly understood the emotions in Samantha's eyes. That emotion was called anticipation. Sorry, I don't know. Matthew only felt that the term Sioux country did not seem to conform to the common language habits of this continent. All right then. Samantha's eyes flashed with disappointment. Most of the people in Ainder don't know much about Sioux country. After I became a druid, I went crazy looking for traces of Sioux country. I only know that the Sioux nation is on the other side of the endless ocean. If you depart from the Gem Coast, there are three ways to find that legendary country. If you headed north, you would cross the eternal ice field and the road of desolation. You would pass through the barren and dangerous Far East, and you would have a chance to reach the northern part of the Sioux country. Chapter 39 Matthew's Living Room You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 39 Matthew's Living Room, to the south, you had to go southeast after arriving at Serrated City. Along the way, you would cross Mount Doom, Voodoo Swamp, and Barbarian Tooth Peninsula. This way, they would have a chance to reach the south of the Sioux country. The last method was to cross the Endless Sea by boat. In short, that country was very distant, mysterious, rich, and powerful. Did you know? The leader of the Sioux country had a legendary profession called Emperor. They combined their own mana with the veins of the earth, and they could release invincible power with a raise of their hands. The Sioux people said that he was the embodiment of the true dragon. The emperor's wife usually received a legendary profession called Empress. Legend had it that she could communicate with the phoenix above the nine heavens and also had powerful energy. The emperor, Empress, and their officials guarded the land of the Sioux country. However, at the borders of the Sioux country, in the endless abyss, there were always demons eyeing them covetously. In order to resist these demons, the emperors of the past generations built a vast and magnificent magical wonder. The Great Wall. It was said that even the shortest part of the Great Wall was more than 300 meters. The emperor often went to the Great Wall to fight the demons in the abyss. The mages under his command were all powerful characters, and they also had a special advanced profession, the Great Wall Mage. It was said that Great Wall Mages could use the power of the Great Wall to cast spells. Ten level point seventeen Great Wall Mages working together could cast a large dot scale destructive spell that was comparable to a legendary spell. Of course, the Empress also has her own group of mages, but their special advanced profession is called Jade Phoenix Mages. It is said that their power comes from the Phoenix that signed a contract with the Empress. Samantha's eyes lit up as she recounted the story. Matthew listened quietly, but his heart was not calm. According to her description, why did this Sioux country seem so much like a magically modified ancient China? After Samantha finished speaking, Matthew said with a fascinated look, that's an amazing country. So, did your friend tell you all that? Samantha nodded. I believe you've guessed it as well. My friend came from the tower ship. He told me that their ship encountered a sea monster in the deep sea. In order to avoid the pursuit of the sea monster, they had no choice but to change their direction. In the end, because the ship was too damaged, they were forced to dock. At this point, she suddenly laughed at herself. It might be my wishful thinking to say that we were friends. Perhaps in his eyes, I was just a little girl who loved to read stories. He was the captain's son and was three years older than me. Their ship had countless snacks, and every one of them was an eye dot opener for me. He took me to his father's room to use the starry mirror, a mirror that could see very far away, and he told me how they fought monsters that were more than 300 meters long in the deep sea. These things were like a dream to me at that time. Matthew was moved. Do you like him? Samantha waved her hand. That's just an unrealistic fantasy of a young girl. 
he and I played together for about two months. Then, one day, they left quietly, just like when they arrived. I only remember the night before he left. He came down from the ship and brought me a lot of snacks. He told me that they were going out to sea to find a secret treasure left behind by a legendary master of the Sioux country in the endless ocean. As long as they find that secret treasure, they can uncover a new path that will allow the mage to control the power of life and death at the same time. He said that he would come to me once he found the treasure trove and wanted to share it with me. One winter, the village was destroyed by bandits. I joined the Moonlight Society and became a druid. Of course, he did not return. Sometimes, I can't even be sure if that magnificent black ship is a dream I had when I was young. At this point, Samantha's eyes were filled with nostalgia. The living room was silent for a long time. Dot, so you came to me just to know if the secret treasure your friend mentioned exists? Matthew asked. Samantha nodded, then shook her head in pain. I'd rather it didn't exist. Otherwise, I'm afraid it'll be difficult for me to continue facing my faith. Matthew said seriously, your faith should be nature, not a god who holds a portion of nature's authority. As he spoke, he stood up and extended his hand to Samantha. Give me your hand. Samantha hesitated. Finally, she placed her hand on Matthew's palm. On the roof. Riagar only heard a brutal beast roar. A strong wind blew. The wild man rushed into Matthew's house at an astonishing speed. Let her go. Eli roared and wanted to break through the window. However, in the next second, a mighty power spread out from Matthew's body. A warm breeze blew from all directions. The house seemed to disappear. In its place, it was a warm and friendly oak forest. Under an oak tree, Matthew and Samantha were standing with their palms against each other. As for Eli, his attack was interrupted by the power of the domain. He looked around in a daze. Suddenly, he let out a long and unbelievable roar. Five seconds later, the oak forest twisted and disappeared. You have activated the oak domain. Druid Samantha has sensed the oak domain with your help. She will have the opportunity to understand the power of the domain. Chapter 40 Matthew's Living Room You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 40 Matthew's Living Room Druid Eli has accidentally entered your oak tree domain. With his high talent, he will also have the opportunity to comprehend the power of this domain. Ah! Matthew turned to look at the window next to him in surprise. Outside the window, Eli's face was twisted. His eyes were filled with gratitude and pain. In short, it was very complicated. Eli. Samantha stomped her foot angrily. Eli pushed open the window and said through gritted teeth, let go of your hand first. Samantha ignored him and looked at Matthew. I didn't expect you to really control the power of life. However, you must not have shared the oak tree domain with me just to show off. What do you want me to do for you? Eli's eyelids twitched. However, under Samantha's murderous gaze. In the end, he shut his mouth. Sioux Country. Matthew pulled out his hand. I want to know everything about the Sioux Country. If possible. I also want the information about the secret treasure. Samantha nodded. You will get what you want the next time we meet. Eli finally couldn't hold it in anymore. There's a next time. Whoosh. Samantha transformed into a leopard and threw him to the ground. In an instant. She turned into a brown bear and quickly dragged Eli out of the town. I'm sorry, Samantha. I didn't mean to break the promise. I just couldn't control myself. I was worried that you would be deceived by that necromancer. Facing the furious Samantha, Eli seemed a little submissive. That's enough. Eli, I don't want to talk too much about this topic with you. You and I might have had a good time talking, but your possessiveness has suffocated me. 
I'm an independent individual. I have my own mind and judgment. I know what I'm doing. Samantha put her hands on her hips. We're done. Eli looked at the other party in disbelief. You're dumping me for him. Samantha's eyes were filled with pity. Can't I have my own will in your eyes? Do I only exist as an attachment to other men in your eyes? You disappoint me. Goodbye, ancient tiger. As she spoke, she turned back into a leopard. After taking a few steps, she turned around and warned, If I find out that you dare to find trouble with Mr. Matthew, you know what will happen. The leopard fluttered a few times and disappeared into the night. Eli stretched out a hand desolately as if doing so could bring back that vigorous figure. There was a burning flame on his chest. He stood there for about ten minutes. Suddenly, he roared and transformed into a ferocious tiger that ran tirelessly. Only in this way could he temporarily forget the pain. Noel did end but as he ran. He came to the oak forest north of the town. He had just been to the oak tree domain, so of course, he would not feel unfamiliar with this place. This was the necromancer's domain source. Instinctively, he raised his claws, wanting to chop down an oak tree. However, at this critical moment, he retracted his claws again. I can't vent my anger on a tree, he muttered to himself. Samantha was probably just angry. I shouldn't have mistrusted her. That necromancer actually has the power of the oak tree domain. Samantha must have her own reasons for visiting him. Maybe I almost ruined her plan. It's normal for her to be angry. If I beg her a few more times, she should forgive me. Unknowingly. He walked to the north of the oak forest. Eli suddenly stopped in his tracks. There was a dangerous aura in the air ahead. You're still as sharp as ever, little tiger. A coquettish female voice came from behind a rock. Eli growled, and a slender black panther walked out gracefully. Quina. Eli said warily. The black panther slowly approached. She even walked up to Eli and tried to scratch the tiger's chin with her claws. But this action was dodged by Eli. What's wrong, little tiger? Are you not happy that your girlfriend dumped you? The Black Panther giggled and said, Then, let me take care of you. You haven't forgotten the fun we've had, right? Shut up, Quina. Disgust flashed in Eli's eyes. I was young and ignorant at that time, which was why I was seduced by you. I didn't know that you had become a member of the Withering Order. We are now mortal enemies. Get lost before I kill you. The tiger growled repeatedly. The thick killing intent solidified. The black panther wanted to tease him, but when she sensed the murderous aura, she leaped away and said, You're really a little tiger who doesn't know how to have fun. Eli stared coldly in the direction where the other party had disappeared. His mind had not become unclear because of the breakup. If Quina appeared here, there must be other members of the Withering Order nearby. What are they doing in this town? The only forest nearby is this oak forest. Eli strolled in the forest, thinking bit by bit. Do the witherers want to attack the oak forest? No, there must be something worse. No, I can't sit by and do nothing. The oak trees are innocent. I benefited a lot from the necromancer's domain just now. Even for that alone, I have to stop the witherers' plot. Thinking of this, Eli made a huge decision in his heart. He wanted to stay in the oak forest to guard this place. He was not leaving. Back in Matthew's living room, 